In September of 1999, I was rear-ended on my way to teaching an evening lecture for DePaul University. I was in the hospital uh, within a few days uh, after that uh, with a diagnosis of a severe concussion. I felt like an alien being. Strange things were happening all the time. I'm sitting in a chair and I couldn't get up and I'm telling myself, Clark, get up, get up. And I might be there for an hour and I couldn't move. I didn't understand what people were saying to me. Um, I couldn't read. I couldn't go to sleep without leaving my eyes open. I had to learn to sleep with my eyes open because as soon as I closed my eyes, I'd get so seasick, I'd you know, feel like I'm gonna throw up. I couldn't understand jokes. I'd be in the middle of trying to teach and my arm would stop moving. I, I couldn't walk down the hall without holding on to the wall so I wouldn't fall over. Uh, if I took an elevator, I'd end up on the floor crawling on my hands and knees. I'd be so sick. It, it's, uh, it's wild. But with these head injuries, we lose that basic spatial understanding of the world. I was faking it all the time. Uh, nobody understood what had happened to me. Um, so I spent almost a decade uh, seeking help with various uh, MDs and acupuncturists and chiropractors. I tried everything uh, to get help. Um, but uh, of those that were sympathetic, and there were many that at least felt for, for my difficulties, uh, they didn't have anything to offer. They just said, uh, Clark Elliott, you're never going to get better. Learn to live with your symptoms. And as a last gasp, gasp effort, after reading this book by Norman Doidge called The Brain That Changes Itself, I searched on the term brain plasticity and by sheer luck came up with Donnelly Marcus's uh, name. I called her up, she brought me, you know, brought me into her office and almost immediately also referred me to her colleague Deborah Zielinski. I, I wasn't particularly hopeful. I mean, Imagine the long string of neurologists and you know, so on that I had seen over the years, none of whom could help me. Uh, so I went into Dr. Zielinski's office and after giving me these initial tests, you know, I said, well, couldn't we, you know, did you read this other paper that I brought in? I have detailed everything that's happened to me. And she said, I did read it, but I don't need to read any more. I know what's wrong with you. And then she started to walk away. She turned back over her shoulder and said, and I know how to fix it. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to sprint out of that old life where I had to live with brain injury and I couldn't do anything without pain and difficulty. You know, I struggled to get through every single day. You can't imagine how ready I was to move on and never think about brain injury again in my life. But I thought, I have 1,200 pages of notes I've taken as a cognitive scientist, an AI professor, because it was an interesting injury. And uh, there are you know, tens of millions of people around uh, the world who are still stuck in exactly that same nightmare soup that I was in. I thought, I have the notes, I can articulate this as an AI professor, as a cognitive scientist, I need to write this book. And so I did choose to do that, and it was uh, over the course of almost two years bringing the book together. Up until this point, for the last eight years, I was this zombie walking around, and I felt like this completely alien being. You know, I could talk and walk, I looked like myself, but inside I was gone. I wasn't there anymore. And there were some moments of real sadness about that because I was like the person I used to be and I thought I'm never going to see him again in my life. Um, but within three weeks, just three weeks of starting uh, you know, treatment with Dr. Zelensky and with Dr. Marcus, you know, and during that period, having gotten these, uh, these glasses, my body was contorting and my brain was waking up I felt like a, a baby just learning how to reach for objects in the world around me. And, and by the end of the third week, I remember this moment coming into, um, uh, after teaching into my office and realizing I could find the door handle again. I could walk after teaching for the first time in, in eight years. And, and, and I realized, you know, the ghost of who I had been was finally returning and I just wept tears. I put my head down on the desk and thought, I'm back for the first time ever. I see this guy again that I thought I would ne never see this person again. It was uh, you know, a moment I will never forget. And in the end, she restored me to being a full AI professor, able to solve these massive, hard, difficult problems that we work on in our field. At, at that time, you know, I think I'm this staid professor, but I have tears flowing down my face thinking, thank you, Dr. Z, Dr. Marcus, for giving me back my life.